You know, there are many surahs in the Qur'an that have oaths. Allah Azza wa Jal swears by different things, right? And the example I decided to share with you today has to do with Surah Al-Mursalat, Surah number 77. Traditionally, it has been held that the oath that Allah swears by something because it's very important. وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَطُورِ سِنِينَ وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْعَصْرِ وَالصُبْحِ وَالْفَجْرِ وَالْلَيْلِ Right? All of these are oaths in the Qur'an. Allah swears by different things. One of the views that has been held is that it, Allah swears by these things because in and of themselves they are powerful and sacred or important. But that's not all. Allah swears by different things to allude or to present an argument that is about to come. So if the beginning of a surah has oaths, it is leading to a conclusion which is called jawabul qasim. The response to these oaths. The oaths are there to set, set a certain mindset, prepare you for an argument that is coming. Okay? With that in mind, I want to share with you some oaths, some really powerful literary oaths in the beginning of Surah Al-Mursalat. You see, the Quraysh had argued, you keep talking about the sun and the moon colliding, about the, the mountains are going to move swiftly like, like, you know, like they're made of wool and they're going to move like that, the oceans are going to boil over, these big things, this is not going to happen. So they were basically arguing that the challenges and the threats of the Qur'an are too cataclysmic. They are too enormous to be possible. In response to that, Allah Azza wa Jal takes an oath in these few ayat, by majority opinion of the Mufassirun and from the language it is supported, Allah swears in the beginning of Surah Al-Mursalat, by, by the creation of Allah, winds. By winds. <laughs>